let's take a look at how you can use a dip buying strategy to maximize your profits using call options instead of buying standard shares. So the dip buying strategy is a pretty common strategy. It's literally, there's memes about it. It's probably one of the most basic strategies. It's just buy the, buy the dip, BTFD, you know? So if you're gonna be buying the dip, why not just buy the dip with calls? And let's take a look at some crypto names because crypto has been running quite a bit these past few months. Um, you know, going back to like October, even before October. But I'm going to take a look at Mara, Coin, Riot. We're going to look at these charts and break down how you can be utilizing calls to maximize your returns instead of just buying standard shares. So here we have the daily chart of Mara on the left and we have the three minute chart on the right. This is currently uh, during market hours. So the session is active. That's why you'll see some movement on the chart here. But I wanted to just kind of make this video during some downtime I had today and look at how you can be maximizing your potential profits with this strategy. So again, the dip buying strategy is literally just buying the dip. So, you know, every time, a, you know, a stock dips, you buy it, stock dips, you buy it, stock dips, you buy it. So it's probably one of the most basic strategies. And as you can see, crypto has been running since like last October. That's why Mar Mara's had like a crazy run. It's gone from down here of $8 up to $31 in about two months, three months almost, yeah. So after a stock has had a crazy run like that, you'll notice that you're gonna get some pullbacks. Crypto's been running for a while now. You'll look at this and you'll see that there, it's been it just pulled back pretty heavily from a high of $31 back on December 27th down here to a low, just about 2042 looks like hit an intraday low of 2039. Now today is January 4th, 2024. And again, you'll see that it's it's got some volatility in crypto names. Like we can look at some other names. Let's check out coin. You know, same thing with coin. Coin has had some volatility. It's been running since October. It's been pulled back massively. It went from 180 down here to 143. Had an intraday low of 144.11. From a you know from a high this was friday so so and this happened this week so on friday there was a sell-off to end the year you know on 12 29 and then the market was closed on monday starting 2023 we're down here on january 2nd we had another big red day going into january 3rd crypto you know it's still going down it gapped down and you started to get some buying back here so this would have been a good day to buy the dip and if you would have bought the dip here, you could have bought coin dips. You know, you could have bought it at you know 145, 146, and you'd be up right now. So let's take a look at another crypto name, Riot. Riot, same thing. It's kind of hovering around here in October. Didn't come back quite as much of a dip percentage-wise as like Mara did. But again, if you look at the new year, you know, the, to end the year, dip down. Friday kind of opened up higher, or Monday. Friday dip down, Tuesday did open up higher, come back down, Wednesday opened up lower, gap down, and then it's been kind of bouncing since then. So how would you trade this? How would you buy the dip here? You could simply just buy the dip. You can buy the stock if you're buying right, you'd buy it here at $14. Mara, you could have just bought the dip here. And one of the biggest things when dip buying, the biggest things you need to look at is to not try to catch a falling knife. I've lost money doing that and trying to time the bottom. You don't need to time the bottom. Um, a biggest thing is staying in the long game when you're trading. You wanna focus on repeatable results and protecting your profits. So that's, no, that's a video for another day. But risk management is key. If you're just trying to maximize your profits by waiting or trying to potentially call the bottom, you're, you're gonna just keep losing. And I've done that. I've done that with a couple of different stocks. I did that really big time with Tesla after their earnings. I, instead of waiting for the chart to look good and balance and consolidate and start moving back up, I try to buy it as it was falling down. And I ended up losing a lot of money because I didn't cut my losses. I didn't admit that I was wrong. That's been one of my biggest things in my trading career is not admitting that I'm wrong. And it doesn't matter how many times you're right because if you just get wiped out when you're wrong, it's gonna really hurt you. Anyways, let's take a look at Mara. So Mara as an example, started pulling back again, started the new year, we bounced up a little bit and then came down. So it kind of looked like maybe 
overnight, you know, the market looked like it might have been bouncing up. But right away, it just started selling off in the new year. So this is on Tuesday, you know, January 2nd. It just started selling off and it was selling off all day. And then it looks like yesterday on Wednesday would have been a great time to buy the dip. And there's a couple ways you could have done this. So let's take a look at the options contracts and see how you could have played this. Okay, so here we have the options chain for Mara. If we're looking at the weeklies, this would be weeklies expiring tomorrow. When you're buying calls and puts, when you're trading options, you have to remember that there is a bigger risk because you're working against time. The shorter dated contracts you buy, the less time you have available, the more likely and the faster you can lose money. Yes, you can make money a lot faster, but again, like I said, it's really based on your risk profile, how much you're willing to lose and how fast you're willing to lose it and how fast you can take profits in the, in the meantime. But let's look at some of these contracts. So we can take a look at the $25 calls. $25 calls would be a good one. So here we have the $25 call options for Mara. As you can see, it is pretty volatile. Let's take a look here. Let's change this to like an hour chart. There we go. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would you trade this? This has come down substantially. And that's kind of my point. I want to get to this because since last week, Mara was up in the 30s. You know, last this is Wednesday of last week. So December 27th, December 28th with Thursday and then December 29th, Friday. If you're looking at this, here's your chart on Wednesday, your high that when it hit the high of 3130, your high on this option chain was six, you know, six dollars and nine cents, which translates to six hundred ninety dollars. And I have another video talking about options pricing and how that works. And you can take a look at that video to kind of see why I'm saying it's six hundred ninety dollars instead of six ninety. But essentially, with options contracts, you're controlling 100 shares. So the way they price them, you're always going to multiply it by 100. In this case, again, you're looking at this. So these calls hit a high of 690. Thursday, they started pulling back. Friday, huge fall down. But again, you could have bought the dip. Even if you bought the dip on Friday, they would have gapped up on Tuesday. And if you would have sold them right away, you could have made money. But that's pretty risky. I typically don't hold over the weekend anymore. Again, I've been burned too many times. I just not respecting my rules so my rules now tell me to open and close a contract depending on the strategy and just but weekend holds i typically don't do it unless it's very very long term but if you're taking a look at this today the contracts are up to currently at 112. if you look at the contracts yesterday opened up at 34 cents so again these would have opened up at 34 dollars yesterday you could have bought them any time yesterday because you had a green day. So this would have been dip buying. Instead of just buying Mara at $21 a share, $22 a share, you could have bought a call contract for $25. $25 call contract expiring on Friday. Short term, so I wouldn't buy these today because, again, tomorrow, if this stock pulls back, you can, you can lose the whole thing with options because you're expiring. So that's why this contract looks so volatile you know so up and down there's such a huge discrepancy here this was literally worth 690 dollars last week and is now currently only worth 113 dollars. so that's a huge huge hit if you would have held these all the way through today now if you would have bought these yesterday you could have gone from anywhere from 50 cents and you would be up over 100 percent currently at this time but let's take a look at the contracts that expire next friday so here we have the contracts for next Friday. It does kind of have that similar look because, again, it hit a high of $835 last Friday, and it is currently down 268 But as you can see here, it's a little bit more stable as far as it hasn't gone, lost so much value. But again, you are running out of time, so these are losing value. But you could have bought these yesterday for $130 and then you'd currently be up at 268. So again, you'd be up 100% on these. So two different expiration dates with a couple different values. You really you really can't go wrong. It really depends on how you choose to trade it and what you're doing that like you're going to buy if you were to take weeklies. For example, if you took weeklies, you could probably get more contracts, which would give you a little bit more control of risk management. You can sell more on the way up. You're also going to most likely be paying more in fees 
depending on which brokerage you're going to use. So, but in this case, this gives you more time to maximize these profits. For example, if you were buying the weeklies that expire tomorrow, these can lose value overnight because if, you know, Mara gaps down or Mara doesn't keep going up, that volatility slows down. You're going to lose a lot of value on those contracts because the time frame is just short, so small that the theta is worn out. In this case, since these expire next week, you get a little bit more time, a little bit more control, a little bit more stable. Let's go even a further week out. So we're still on the $25 calls, but this time we're looking at options that expire two weeks away. And again, your gain's not gonna be that big here, but you do kind of retain a little bit more value. For example, the high last week was 871. They're currently trading at $330. And you could have bought these yesterday around $2, even if you waited up a little bit two for 250, you would be up. So you'd be in the green right now. And again, that's like a pretty stable trade. If you make your stop loss at above 20% or even break even at this point, you can't really lose on this trade unless you hold it overnight and it gaps down tomorrow and you lose a lot of value overnight, which can always happen. So let's take a look at coin now. We have the coin daily on the left. This is going to be the one hour chart on the right. So shorter time frame just to kind of visualize the how fast this is moving. But let's take a look at this again. Coin's been running, coin's been running. It hasn't really had like a huge pullback until these last three trading days to start the new year. So there was a huge, the huge pullback last Friday at the end of the year. Another continuation going down on Tuesday and then it gapped down on Wednesday before starting to bounce back up here. You know, this is on a shorter time frame. This was the Friday going down. Tuesday kind of pre-market looked like it, it opened up higher, but then by the time the market opened, it started going back down very quickly and then kept going down overnight on wednesday pre-market wednesday going down before bouncing and starting to come back up kind of cons consolidating towards the close and then today again continuing up so you could have dip bought here you can dip buy it today you can you can be looking towards further out and, and buying some contracts further out and seeing how that would play off again the more money you have in your account the more options you have in terms of how you can pick an expiration date a lot of people buy weeklies because they're cheaper and so you lose a lot of money that way when you're wrong or you don't cut your losses because you're just kind of bleeding small paper taking small paper cuts like oh well i can turn this 30 dollars into 300 dollars, you know 10x if it runs or you can just keep losing 30 bucks every time losing 30 bucks over time every week that's gonna add up i've done that not with 30 bucks i've done that with thousands of dollars so trying to you know Focus on my risk management, my rules, and respecting my rules is the biggest thing I'm focusing on as a trader currently. But in this case, looking at the dip buying strategy and how you can use that with calls. So we have the option for coin. Again, for coin, I'm not going to go on the weekly. I'm going to look at uh, next week's options because it's just going to give us a little bit more stability and kind of lower the risk slightly. Again, you're not going to eliminate the risk because who knows, there could be news coming out all of a sudden crypto's going to be banned and you never know like you get random news throughout the day that happens especially with crypto crypto is so crazy you might have uh you know one of the funds blowing up all of, or you might have a crypto market blowing up which has happened before an sec investigation comes out all of a sudden crypto tanks you know a whale unloads and it just happens periodically it happens so randomly since the crypto markets trade 24 hours a day it's very very risky to hold contracts on crypto names overnight and things like that because anything can happen especially shorter data time frames so we're looking at the 150 dollar calls for coinbase if you're looking at this these are the 150 calls for coinbase expiring next friday the 12th january 12th so again today's june again today is january 4th so we're taking a look at this contract here. You could have just purchased Coinbase yesterday when it, you know, once it started to get green after that first day sell off into the new year. You could have bought Coinbase here at like 146, 145, even waited a little bit, maybe bought it at 150. And you would be up right now. Again, you would be up right now. But let's even take this a little bit further because crypt, you know, because coin has this such this large this such there is such a huge gap here that you could have even taken something like a 160 call which would have been cheaper let's take a look at the 160 call here because this might give you a little bit better feel so 
again, 160 is in this window. It's not without it's not without realm of reach because the further the pullback, the bigger the dip can be, the bigger the bigger the bounce can be. Since this pulled back pretty pretty heavily, you know, it lost about forty three dollars in three days. The bounce potential is there if you're not trying to catch the falling knife. Yesterday was the first green day, the first stabilization. So how could you play this? Obviously, if it op if you bought this yesterday, today it opened up lower. You could have sold it. You could have, wherever your stop loss was, but you're still trading green. So these are the 160 calls. They opened up with the they opened up at five, hit a low of 450. If you didn't buy them right away, they stabilized. You could have bought them today again at the open for like 650. They're currently trading at 903. So again, 900. dollars So yesterday, 500. dollars Today, nine hundred dollars. So you're looking at about, depending on when you bought these, you could be up about 50, 60 percent. That's because these expire next Friday. For looking at a shorter dated time frame, these are the calls that expire tomorrow. So that volatility was there, but it's kind of like stabilized. Again, you could have got in here pretty quickly today, bought them at two and sold them up here for over hundred percent. So again, that's just an example of the dip by method and how you can use calls to make a little bit more money and looking at some crypto names.